Hi, my name is James Lee. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. I'm a citizen. Um, why is the EPA claiming that six greenhouse gases emitted from jet planes are a threat to human health under the Clean Air Act while doing nothing to address ongoing lawsuits over leaded aviation gasoline or the real health concerns of stakeholders worldwide? Cancer causing heavy metals and fuels and their additives <clears throat> and aviation induced cloudiness. You, the EPA, claim the authority to regulate aviation emissions under the Clean Air Act, a law that should protect us from the aforementioned poisonous pollution. However, the definition of pollution is being perverted to mean climate change gases in what can only be called a violation of the spirit of the law. Air pollution which may reasonably be anticipated to endanger public health or welfare. That's the quote. As you can see by the wording in the Clean Air Act, lead, barium, aluminum, and trade secret toxic chemicals clearly present a greater danger to public health than greenhouse gases, no matter how much climate science you accumulate. Furthermore, material safety data sheets of aviation fuel and their additives almost always contain the same warning, do not dump in water. Yet, raw fuel dumping or burning these chemicals, dangerous chemicals and then dumping them in water is somehow safe. Finally, despite great efforts to find bioaccumulation or biomagnification studies on precipitated aviation pollutants, none seem to exist. The EPA and Obama administration are ignoring the global outrage over the most visible climate change concern from airplanes, cloud creation. Do a search for the word chemtrails on the internet and you will see millions of concerned citizens who look up and wonder what in the world are they spraying. Despite what you may think of the myriad of maladies attributed to these clouds, the global outrage is nonetheless clear. They are right to be worried, and we should all be concerned. The EPA's claim that CO2 is a greater threat to human health than contrails and aviation-induced cloudiness is based on incomplete IPCC data that downplays the effects of contrails on our climate. The IPCC's fourth, ass fourth assessment of contrail radiative forcing only accounted for linear contrails meaning any contrail that spreads out and turns into cirrus clouds was not accounted for. How significant is this heat-trapping contrail conundrum? Quote, contrails formed by aircraft can evolve into cirrus clouds indistinguishable from those formed naturally. These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. Another researcher stated, a single aircraft operating in conditions favorable for persistent contrail formation appears to exert a contrail-induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than the estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing from the entire civil aviation fleet. Although this research has now been incorporated into the IPCC computer models and revised down, in my opinion, these claims highlight gaping holes in climate science. As of 2013, quote, aerosol cloud interactions are, the, are one of the main uncertainties in climate research. Scientific understanding of how contrails transition into cirrus clouds is severely lacking but rapidly evolving with the latest research showing that cirrus clouds are filled with metal aerosols from human sources. Quote, the big one we found is lead, coming from things like tetraethyl lead and fuels, still used today in light aviation. So that's probably the biggest metal that we find, or the most frequent metal that we find. But we find a whole host of different metals, actually. Apparently, small amounts of metal particulates have major effects on cirrus clouds. Quote, it would seem that you would have to change all of the aerosol in the atmosphere very radically to get a big difference on big effect on the clouds, but because mineral dust and metallic particles are such a small amount of the particulate matter, just a percent or two, it means that you only have to change about a percent or two of the particles to get a big effect on these clouds. The latest research casts doubts on the IPCC's contrail assumptions and requires serious consideration when addressing the real climate change impact of aviation. High altitude metals and cirrus cloud condensation nuclei are likely coming from leaded avgas and jet exhaust. 
contrails or making cirrus clouds and small changes in atmospheric metal have large impacts on cirrus cloud creation. Cirrus clouds trap heat and are likely to have a greater impact, climate change impact than CO2. Finally, aviation-induced cloudiness endangers future growth in solar energy, affects tourism and spending, and is projected to make terrestrial astronomy impossible by 2050. Geoengineering scientists, NASA, NOAA, FAA, USDA, DOE, and international corporate partners are discussing the use of biofuels and sulfur-doped jet fuels for contrail control. This cirrus and cirrus cloud seeding with bismuth, bismuth triiodide to melt these clouds away. The EPA should be directly involved in these discussions. As a result of these recent filings, I findings, I strongly encourage the EPA to consider expanding the scope of this endangerment to include metal particulates and cloud formation from jet exhaust. If the EPA complies with the spirit of the Clean Air Act, they will protect us from metal aerosols attributed to Alzheimer's, autism, cancer, and a plethora of other debilitating illnesses. If the EPA is truly concerned about aviation-induced climate change, they will regulate the production of contrails and cirrus clouds, which change our climate to a much greater extent than the sum of the six greenhouse gases named in this proposal. Regulating heavy metals and aviation-induced cloudiness will be meaningless without proper verification. Even though ICAO members sign a binding agreement to only use certain chemicals in their gas tanks, we all know agreements and regulations are useless without proper verification. Therefore, I request mandatory, random testing of jet exhaust be immediately implemented. This is the most important step the EPA can, can take to law, do its due diligence to protect us from harmful pollution and get real world data to improve future regulations. Most of the data behind this endangerment finding comes from research in highly controlled environments where vari most variables are known. We need verification of non-ideal situations where fuel fouling, fame contamination, or improper maintenance end in vastly different exhaust particulates than seen in lab settings. To achieve verification, I propose that the EPA randomly attach a trailing probe to both foreign and domestic flights, then collect and analyze the results to determine real-world exhaust constituents. Alternatively, ground-based LIDAR observations may be possible over fixed high-traffic areas and prevent possible terrorist attacks using aerosols. Either way you choose, we need verification and protection. In conclusion, the EPA should expand this endangerment to include metal aerosols and cloud creation, create a verification system that includes all aircraft, protects us from aviation pollution, holds violators accountable, and commits to better scientific accuracy for future determinations. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of so many who could not be here. Um, and thank you for listening to a, a layperson's views um, on this subject. While I appreciate the efforts of the Center for Biological Diversity, the Sierra Group, and the Friends of the Earth to get the EPA to hold the aviation industry accountable, the poor people like myself have to live near these airports, under these fuel dumps, and under these clouded skies. I hope that some faith can be restored in our EPA by your action here and now. Tell the ICO, ICAO that they will meet your demands and our demands, not the other way around. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you for all of your comments. Um, second panel. Next yes, thank you all. I think we're okay. Set. And then